lurking in this place I worship you I worship you Kids Online. My name is Miss Brooke and if you are in first, second, third, fourth, or fifth grade then you are in the right place. This video is for you. You're my New Hope Ninjas and my New Hope Knight. So I'm so glad you're here today. You know we just finished a series called Breaking News which was all about the prophets. And if you weren't here, the prophets were people that lived a long time ago and God would give them messages to tell to the people. So things that God wanted the people to know, he'd tell the prophets and the prophets would tell everybody. And it was all kinds of things from how to live their lives to how to worship God better. Um, and they even had prophecies about Jesus. Because even though Jesus wasn't born yet, he was still around because he's God, right? So um, it was telling people that a Savior was going to be coming. So, you know, we do a lot of waiting. So guess what? This series that we're starting today is called Wait For It. I mean, right now we're in the middle of COVID. There's all kinds of waiting. You have to wait to get into stores. Uh, we have to wait to go to school. We have to wait to see our families sometimes. There's a lot of things we have to wait for. And of course, since it's December, we're also waiting for Christmas. I mean, even with COVID, we're still gonna have Christmas. So we're waiting for it, right? Because it's still pretty exciting and fun. And the thing is, that people have been waiting for Christmas for a long time. But again, even before Jesus was born, 
people were waiting for a savior because through the prophets, God promised his people that he would send a savior. So make sure you tune in every week this month. We're going to have lots of fun. So um, let me show you some pictures here. So I'm going to show you some pictures of some heroes. Heroes are people who save people, right? And the thing that I want you to notice about these heroes is that they save very specific people, okay? For instance, let's see, we have a firefighter. They're going to save you if your house is on fire, right? Okay. How about, um, oh, how about a soldier? A soldier might save you if you're being, if your country is being attacked by somebody else. How about, oh, how about medical people, doctors and nurses? If you get sick, they might save you, right? How about, oh, how about police officers? If you're a good guy, they're going to try to save you from the bad guys, right? Oh, how about if you go swimming? You need these people because they might be able to save you if you get in trouble in the water. And, oh, last one here. Gosh, paramedics. If you get sick and there's an emergency and you have to go to the doctor, then the paramedics might be able to save you by getting you to the doctor in time, right? So the thing is that all of those jobs um, require like special training, of course, because you have to know how to do those special jobs, but they're also specifically designed to save people in certain situations, in certain dangers, like your house is on fire or you're swimming. But see, the thing about Jesus is that Jesus is also a hero. Only the thing that's different about him is that he came to save everybody. So for those of you who remember um, what had been going on with God's people, they were going through some really hard times. Um, it was just really tough. And God had promised a savior. So they waited and they waited. Now, the prophets talked about um, that there was a Savior to come, but this was way before that they knew that Jesus was going to be the Savior. Now, prophets also talked about someone else that would come before the Savior to prepare the way. Now, that person, that messenger, his name was John the Baptist. So, I'm going to read to you a little bit about from the beginning of the book of Mark which talks a little bit about John the Baptist because his job was to prepare the people for Jesus to come. Now, I'm not talking about preparing like you might prepare to have company over and your mom makes you help clean the house. I'm not talking about that kind of preparing. This is a different kind of preparing. So listen to what it says. Long ago, Isaiah the prophet wrote, I will send my messenger ahead of you. He will prepare your way. A messenger is calling out in the desert, prepare the way for the Lord, make straight paths for him. And so John came. He baptized people in the desert. He also preached that people should be baptized and turn away from their sins. Then God would forgive them. All of the people from the countryside of Judea went to him. All of the people from Jerusalem went too. When they admitted they had sinned, John baptized them in the Jordan River. John wore clothes made out of camel hair, and he had a leather belt around his waist. And he ate locusts and wild honey. So, again, John is Jesus' messenger, and he's reminding them that everyone needs saving. Now, it wasn't the kind of saving that they thought, because they thought they needed saving from somebody kind of like the pictures that I showed you. Like somebody who was going to save them from the Roman government or save them from bad stuff happening to them on earth. That wasn't the kind of saving he was talking about, though. They needed saving from being separated from God by their sin. Because when we sin or when we disobey God, it like separates us from God. Like it makes us hard to talk to him and hard to have a relationship with him. So we needed saving from that. We needed saving from our sins. And so what we really needed to do 
was to go to God and tell him that, that we were sorry and then kind of try to change our direction and change our ways with what we're doing, okay? So um, that's what needed to happen. Listen to this in the next part because this is talking about um, how we're connected with God. Here's what John was preaching. After me will come one who is more powerful than I am. I am not good enough to bend down and untie his sandals. I baptize you with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. So, like I said, we need to be connected with God. Now, when the very first humans disobeyed God for the very first time, they felt disconnected to him. And really, the same is true for us, too, because we also sin and we need saving. In fact, that's our big idea for today. Everybody needs a savior. Hey there, little chicken nuggets. It's me, Carl. And boy, do we have a fun show for you today. Welcome to Google TV. Hosted by... Where we have fun with our friends, talk about Jesus, and go over everything the Bible has to offer. Now, once again, welcome to TV. Hello, and welcome, my friends, my amigos, my compadres, my acquaintances, my confidants, and other things. Welcome! Anywho, I'm pretty excited today because I just found out we started a new series this month. And the name of the theme is... Drumroll, please. Wait for it. Wait for it. Wait for it. Wait for it. It's coming. <laughs> it's coming. Wait for it. Oh, oh no, the actual series is called Wait For It. <laughs> My mistake. It's called Wait For It because we're going to talk a lot about waiting. Waiting for what? Well, I don't know yet. We'll find out together. But while we wait for it, <laughs> we can play some board games. I'm not bored. <laughs> Get it. Now let's see, what game should we play first? We play Battleship? Maybe Monopoly? We're gonna play like a game, like football or basketball. Well, maybe not, because last time I did that, I dunked so hard and made so many touchdowns that people got scared of me. So, that's probably not the best idea. I'm pretty intimidating. Ha! Or maybe we can even play catch. Catch! Meow. What about musical chairs? There's not a lot of room to do this. Or maybe perhaps charades. I was a piece of plywood. <laughs> wow, I gotta say, this is a little weird. I'm not sure why. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. It's gonna be a little weird. I don't know. I don't know. Oh, thank goodness. Carl, how you doing, man? Sam! Hi everybody, my good friend Sam. We go way back. Hey Sam, do you remember that one time we found a moose in the Walmart parking lot? Do I? That thing almost ran me over if you hadn't done the thing with that. Yeah, and then when you whoosh! Oh, remember the time we did this thing? Guy who had the... <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Those are some good times. So Carl, what are you up to today? Well, we heard we started a new series today, right? Oh yeah, I'm so excited that it's called Wait For It. Wait for what? It. What's it? No, wait for it. That's the name. Oh yeah, duh, I knew that. Well, I was actually just trying to play some games. Oh cool, that sounds like fun. Yeah, but to be honest, I guess I was having a hard time. Why is that? Well, I was playing games that really didn't work for just myself. Oh, well, too bad you don't have someone to play with now. <laughs> right? Totally stinks. I just wish there was some... <gasps> Wait a minute! There it is. You can play it with me. There I was thinking I didn't have anyone. Then BOOM! You showed up to save the day. Do you think you play with me? Of course, Carl. But before we play anything, don't you think we should... 
talk about the Bible story? I mean, I think that's what the kids are waiting for. Oh, right. Carry on. Sweet. So do you know who John the Baptist is? Sure I do. My neighbor's name is John and he goes to the Baptist church. <laughs> no, I mean John the Baptist from the Bible. He was a man who loved God a lot. Well, I like him already. You see, God had a very special plan for John. What was it? See, back then, everyone knew that God had been promising a savior for a long time. Really? How long? Hundreds and hundreds of years. <gasps> wow! Right? So John knew that one day the Son of God would come. But they didn't know when, so he had to do something very important. Take a shower. Not quite. John had to prepare the way for the Savior, and he did that by making sure people's hearts were ready. How did he do that? John told everyone to ask God to forgive their sins. Then everyone who listened to John's message got baptized in the river. Wow, that's amazing. So that's how they got ready for Jesus. Wait, Jesus is the Savior we're talking about, right? Oh, Carl, spoilers. But yeah, it's Jesus. Ha, huh, I knew it. But the people didn't know that yet. John wanted to remind everyone that they were waiting for the Savior and to help them get ready for when the Savior came. How cool is that? Yup. And just like you had to wait to play a game till you had someone else with you, John also waited for Jesus. He knew that Jesus would not only save the day, but that he would be the Savior to all people. Totally. I guess we all have the same goal that John did. We're all meant to prepare for Jesus and live for him because everyone needs a savior. Talk about saving the day. You just said our big idea, Carl. Sam? <laughs> no, I didn't. I did. This is a big idea. Today's big idea is everyone needs a savior. That's right. So let's say it out loud on the count of three. One. Two. Three. three. Everyone, everyone needs, needs a savior. savior. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Good job, everyone. You do. I do. You're all there. I don't need a Sam. Yeah? You know what time it is? Um, no. <laughs> it's game time. Finally. Oh, yeah. This game is called Whoever Doesn't Have Long Hair Has to Eat Chicken Nuggets Till They Cry. Um, look at the time. I gotta get going. Sorry, Carl. See you next week, kiddos. Thank you for watching, and tune in next week for a new episode of Pro TV. Okay, so let me ask you this. Have you guys ever played the, the game Sorry? You know, it's the one where you roll the dice or you pop the little thing and you, you move your marker around the board, but if somebody lands on your spot, they say sorry, and you have to go all the way back to the beginning. It can be so frustrating. But here's the thing. It's kind of like that with God, too, when we mess up. I mean, when we say sorry to God, we kind of have to go backwards a little bit because we kind of have to say, okay, I'm sorry. Now, how can I kind of change what I'm doing so I don't wind up right back in that same place having to say sorry again. But the good news is that God is going to give us as many times as it takes. And if you let him, he's going to stay right with you to help you stay on track and keep going in the right direction. So um, it's a brand new month. So that means we have a new Bible verse for this month. So our verse this month comes from the book of Micah and it's Micah 7, 7. And it says, but as for me, I watch and hope for the Lord. I wait for my God, my Savior. My God will hear me. Okay, let's say that one more time. But as for me, I watch and hope for the Lord. I wait for God, my Savior. My God will hear me. So if we put a few hand signals with that, it's going to say, but as for me, I watch in hope. Hope is like this, hope for the Lord. Remember we make the L, we go across our chest. So, but as for me, I watch in hope for the Lord. I wait for God, my savior, my God 
will hear me. All right? So I want you guys to keep practicing that all week. Let's pray together. Let's pray together. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you so much for, um, for sending us a Savior. We know that we need a Savior. We need saving because we need to know how to have a relationship with you, how to be friends with you, God. Um, thank you for loving us so much that you were willing to send a Savior for us. And just thank you for always being there to help keep us on track uh, when we're ready to obey you and to follow you. Um, please watch over all these kids and their families this week. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, guys, I hope you had a great time today. I hope you have a fabulous week. And, of course, I hope you can wait for next week to uh, get together again so we can do more Wait For It. See you next time. Bye.